Hi. Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and welcome. How are you today? I am thrilled to be here. Um, we're going to talk all about metallic threads. I love metallic threads. And with the holidays coming, it is the best time of year to really get to be an expert with metallic threads and learn how to use them properly and get the most out of those shiny, shiny beautiful threads. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for joining us from Texas. And Alicia Gentry, hello from Northwest Arkansas. Oh boy, Alicia, your door last week was outstanding. I have to say it really was. So we're going to take a look at some of uh, the other doors that we didn't get to show last week. And then we're going to talk about the metallic threads with quilting, wearables, and 3D. So hello, um, Isabel Rian. She's our friend who joins us from France and Carol Brooks from Minnesota. Um, and Gail is in Canada. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Misha. Nice to have you here today, too. And Jackie Burke from upstate New York. Uh, Aloha, Judy Warren. Great to have you here. Um, we've had a good week. I hope you've had a good week, too. You know, it's busy here, I'll tell you. It's really been busy. We were doing lots of virtual events and, um, <clears throat> you know, every day is just action packed. So I love getting this special time with the chat with all of you on Thursday afternoons at one o'clock. So if you are watching the rebroadcast, thank you for doing that. We do, we, we're live every Thursday at one o'clock. And if you uh, subscribe to YouTube or like us on Facebook, you'll be notified when we're going live. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the doors that we have um, found. And uh, so first we'll take a look at, you know, January through April. We have to always stick with that so that those who are new, uh, I just want you to know you can always download these doors all year long. It's a free design every month. And this is January, January, February, March, and April, followed by May. June, July, and August. And then, you know, we're coming into the fall. So we have September and October. But your doors, if you post it on Facebook or out on the web and use the hashtag Dime Door or Dime Doors, we can find them and then we'll include them here in the broadcast. Like, for instance, here is Chris Yost. She did a beautiful job. I may have actually showed hers also last week, but I just love the, fatter, the fabric that she used behind her screen door. It's a printed fabric with ghosts. Oh, super cute. And then Isabel Briand, there you are, Isabel. Beautiful job, just gorgeous. I love the, um, the extras that you put in. I think they're Don's extras from OML Embroidery. Just beautiful. And you opted to use green thread for your spider on the bottom instead of I the original was purple but who cares right it's just all for inspiration and Janet Ro Rossboro you added some vinyl to the uh to your screen door itself so that it looks like we're looking through the, the glass window instead of a screen that looks wonderful and Linda Di Giovanni that is just beautiful fabric so colorful oh it just screams Halloween really awesome and then Lisa Grainley I like her bright colors and she put uh, the house number 4C in the frame of her door right up there at the top that's super cool and she decided to position her bat so they're flying they're not hanging from the thread that's a cool idea i like that and she added an extra mouse in the bottom um left super cool and uh lynn archibald she's got her black cat all arched hair raising right at the bottom of her screen uh and her color choices are are really cool i like that they're very lifelike yeah um so let's see norma fitch gensler she has a whole little vignette there on her in her display. She has her screen door with ha a Happy Halloween banner across the top of the door. And then she has some cute little uh, teddy bear statues and some uh, fall leaves underneath her display. And Pam Andrews Rollins did something uh, expanding her display also by hanging her door on a wooden dowel and a kind of a rustic rope, right? And then putting a bat with hop, Happy Halloween on it. it looks really very nice. Um, 
So, and thanks people for joining. I see you're coming in from Hamilton, Indiana, Victoria, and Catherine from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Welcome, it's great to have all of you here. Robin Matson rhodes she did a uh, really, I love the blue. Who doesn't like a blue quilt block, right? It has universal appeal. And she also did the Happy Halloween banner. They were extras or you know free, free minis from uh, OML Embroidery. And Renault Paulson, she has a beautiful metallic fabric for her screen door. And it's just gorgeous. And her orange spider in the bottom, very cool. I think maybe what really might take the cake in that one, though, is the wood fabric she found for the porch. So lifelike. And I love how the grain is just, you know, traveling right across the front of the porch. Rose Gully, she uh, went rather traditional. And Sandra Conley went in a completely different um, direction with bright, colorful pattern fabric that has spider webs and all kinds of uh, Halloween-y things, right? Orange stars and some purple moons, really very lovely. And I like that she threw the witch's hat down on the ground in front of the mouse, very nice. And Sarah Jones, now in her notes, I read her post and she said in the corners of her door, so those ornaments that are added around the door frame, she stitched them in glow in the dark thread. Robeson Anton, I believe, makes a glow in the dark thread that you know, is quite popular at Halloween. And uh, so I imagine in the dark, those little corner brackets will light up. But look at Diane Char. Wow, I think that is just outstanding. So she chose orange fabric for the screen itself, and then she layered tulle on top of it. And you can kind of see that it adds another dimension to it. And then that batik fabric that she found that is kind of a brick batik, Beautiful. That works just beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Carol Lombard. Well, I always say it's Carol Lombard, but it could be Chris, but C. Lombard. You're right. These, she says these doors are fabulous. Aren't they all great? Everybody's doors are just amazing what they um, come up with. And she said they are fabulous. I like that. That's great. Okay. And then we have Marilyn York Patno. She also went very colorful. She's got kind of a, a funky gray fabric with some purple details for the house and then uh, the swirl fabric for the porch. And then Marianne Dottie, she has a, a really fun spider web fabric that she used for the screen. And then that tiny polka dot, super cute. I like that, you know, can't go wrong with polka dots, right? Marianne Dottie also did a second door or well, maybe the first one was the second one. I'm not sure which was first, but this one is a little bit more traditional. She used a uh, an orange fabric for the house and kind of a seafoam green for the porch and gray for the screen itself. And then Connie Kessler, wow, she kind of really went to town and not only did a beautiful job, a job of the door, but she also decorated, you know, the hanging tabs and the frame itself with those fun skeletons with the googly eyes. I know that's very popular over at uh, OML Embroidery. You can't get enough googly eyes over there. And then she also added, um, if you take a look at the lower portion of her uh, Connie Kessler's door where she has um, the porch fabric. She has stitched a pumpkin and the mice on there, but I think she also has some pattern fabric in there. So it just adds a really nice uh, dimension. Really fun. Really, really fun. Alicia, she says she loves all the doors. I do too. They're just awesome. And uh, Jean Gunther, thanks for joining us from Wisconsin, one of my favorite states in the U.S. Beautiful up there. Okay, so what's next? Let's talk about why we're here today, which is all about metallic thread. And you know, you'll notice I did my shirt, um, Shine On, really a fun sketch design that I purchased over at Urban Threads. They have great embroidery designs for metallic thread. Um, we, we do a lot of lace and metallic thread and also a lot of quilting, but we don't really, you know, digitize specifically for me metallic thread. And I'm not so sure that that's there in the Urban Thread's uh, intention also, but it sure does work. So how did the whole concept of metallic thread start? Well, you know, I, I would probably look back into Japanese culture, into the kimonos, which were a symbol of, um, 
prosperity. They were used by all members of society, but the more embellished, the more elaborate was a symbol of your status in um, the community. So this is a, a kimono that's displayed at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And this beautiful one, which is all embroidered, is in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And from their website, they shared that metallic thread was used to really create dazzling embroidery. And it's made from back centuries ago, it was made wrapped in uh, a silk core. A silk core was wrapped in paper and then wrapped in gold or silver leaf. And then the resulting thread was so thick you couldn't pass it through a needle. So today you can pass it through a needle. It's a little bit different. And instead of a silk core, it has a polyester core, which is very strong and yet very fine. And that is then wrapped in rice paper, which gives it the, uh, the dimension that it needs. And, uh, and then the metallic finish is applied to the rice paper. So this King Star metallic thread does not kink. You'll see, I'm gonna show you how it doesn't kink. It's so cool. And it runs so smoothly through all of our embroidery machines. You can run this thread at a very high speed you can choose to slow it down to like 600, but you most certainly can um, stitch it at a thousand stitches per, mi per minute. It's, it's just beautiful. And it results in fewer thread breaks and it produces such high quality um, embroidery. And the best part, it's color fast. It's not gonna fade. You can wash it and wash it. And Reen Wilcoxon is joining us. Hi Reen from Embroidery Garden, she says, um, she loves that meta purple metallic. I know, the purple is so beautiful. It's really beautiful. I know, I love it. And um, so let's, let's see what else is next. What have I done with it? Well, I've made an awful lot of jewelry with it. Here are some feathers that I've turned into a necklace and also earrings. And in this instance, the metallic thread is not only in the needle, it's also in the bobbin. And it just stitches beautifully. Here I've paired denim and it's a kind of a denim fringed feather with the King Star metallic stitched feather and then added that to a chain with some stones and you know, love that, that's super fun. But I know many of us like to quilt, right? So let's head over to the other camera and take a look at a beautiful design that I stitched out um, this week. And again, these designs are from our friends over at or urban threads and they are just amazing this broom design is 12,500 stitches the bat is 24,999 and the cat is 17,000 stitches 233 i stitched all three of these designs without one thread break the stippling is free motion i did all this free motion quilting myself and not one thread break the entire time. And you know, when you do free motion, right? You, I'm controlling that fabric and steering that fabric under the needle. And you most certainly can get thread breaks then because it's not the pre precision feeding that it would be in embroidery. So all of these stitches, 250,000, no, how many? Oh, I forget. I did the math and now I can't remember. And I can't, I can't add on camera. But anyway, not one thread break. And you'll see here, we have the bronze, the purple, the silver, and the red all combined onto this bat, bat. And here we have the silver and the gold, and here that beautiful purple. Doesn't it just sing? And this is dull, boring fabric. This fabric is really not very attractive, but when you add beautiful metallic thread to it, oh, it just pops right off. But what if you just have really plain black thread and you wanna, jazz that up a little bit. Well, this is a grid that I stitched um, on this quilted little bag and then this 3D lace border. It's just beautiful, right? That beautiful purple is lovely. And then this was a digitized quilting design. No thread breaks through any of this. It's just great. So let's take a look at another quilt design. This is a whole table runner that each all of the quilting that you see is all done in, in gold King Star metallic thread in the blocks. And in the border, it is our green metallic thread. 
So you, you can see each one is just beautiful. No thread breaks. Every, you can, there's no thread tails visible. This is continuous line embroidery. It's just beautiful. That's our tapestry collection. Um, you can find that on our website, but I love that. Really nice. And then, so the 3D embroidery, just like this beautiful lace border, here's some snowflakes. Now notice these are stitched with matching thread in the, in the bobbin and the needle. And it's so perfect. You really can't tell which side is which, you know, because I tacked it onto a ribbon. So this makes this side the right side, but theoretically you really wouldn't know that. They're all just so gorgeous, each one. And depending on how you rinse out that water soluble stabilizer, they can be very flexible and soft and drapey, or they could be a little bit more rigid to really hold their shape. That's a whole another lesson in, unto itself. I even stitched that beautiful purple metallic thread onto these slippers. Um, I thought that was a great gift for um, a lady, you know, matching slippers in a cosmetic bag, really thoughtful. And, um, but on a garment, like the one I'm wearing, I thought I would show you how I hoop that because I know last week we talked about left chest embroidery and on something like this, it's just going to be in the center. So I just wanna get my shirt here in the camera so you can see it. So what I've done here is I'm just folding my t-shirt in half, matching that side, the shoulder seam and smoothing it down. I would have stabilizer already applied to the shirt. And then I print my template on um, the print and stick target template paper. And that's a tacky paper. So once I stitch that, I have my crosshair on there. I then place it as high as I can go on the, um, on the shirt itself. You know, I'm a petite woman, so I know I don't need to have this too far below the rib neckline. And it's a big design. It's eight inches tall. So if I move it too far down away from the neckline, it's probably going to be centered, you know, like under my bust, which isn't really what we want. So I just align that vertical crosshair with the fold, smooth this part down, and then just flip that open, finger press it, and then I'm ready to go and just hoop that and stitch it. And it's super easy, I love it. I use um, the no-show mesh on the wrong side of the shirt because it's very comfortable next to the skin and it's sturdy enough to hold all these uh, stitches. But these are all bean stitches in this beautiful design from Urban Threads. It's not satin stitches, so uh, it's still a lot of stitches, but you know, it's beautiful, just lovely. Okay, so how do we know when we find a really great metallic thread? Well, I'm going to show you how it spools off of the, the spool. And this is a great test that you can do on any metallic thread spool that you have at home. So just lift up the spool and then let it puddle. And if it puddles in a circular pattern, just looping around, like it, you see how it's just very flowing and all these circles, that means you're not going to get kinks in the embroidery during the stitching process or kinks in the thread path as the thread travels through the tension disc and you know the take up lever and all the way through the embroidery. Many metallic threads will kink. It'll look more like a geometric kind of a square angular pattern here on my fabric as it spools off than just this beautiful flowing soft curves. That's when you know you're not gonna have any kinks on our King Star. I just love that King Star. And it comes in, well, it comes in several different colors, but right now we have this beautiful display of um, six pack the holiday six pack with the purple, the red and the green, silver and gold and bronze. So let's look at some of these color combinations. This is what my bat was in. Isn't that beautiful? Because you know, the bronze just gives you a little bit of offsetting here. Let's bring that bat back in here. I guess I did add some gold, just a little bit of gold to his, um, body and his face, and then a little bit of an accent with the red around those uh, elements here. But 
on my cat, he was just purple and gold. Can't go wrong with purple and gold. That's the color of royalty, right? It's the color of Mardi Gras. So that takes you all through Mardi Gras season. Talking about taking you through the seasons, here we have green and silver, perfect for St. Patty's Day. Red and silver, perfect for Valentine's Day. And of course, Christmas is just a wonderful combination of all these colors, right? And of course, the very traditional silver and gold are combined here in this broom. But wouldn't they be wonderful as Christmas bells or Christmas ornaments, any of those types of designs? That is the holiday pack that you're going to need for your holiday stitching. All right, let's see if you have any questions. Maybe you have some questions. All right, love the purple, they say. Okay, like the person, the snowflakes, metallic thread, really, yes, Joreen, it really does add so much to embroidery. And, you know, it adds a subtle element of shine and glimmer without mylar and crystals. When, you know, I like mylar and crystal, but sometimes that's just, you know, very powerful. And you really just want to kind of catch somebody's eye. You know, if you, you want to catch the light a little bit and that's what the metallic thread really does. Now, I'll tell you a little secret that I've learned and actually my stitching sister, Marie Zeno, helped me out with this. One time I was working on my 10 needle on a, on a project that had uh, quite a bit of metallic thread in it. And I had four different spools you know, on my 10 needle of metallic thread. And one spool, no matter what I did to it, would not stitch. Change the needle, it's always probably my first thing. Well, first I would maybe adjust the tension and then the needle, and I could not get it to stitch on that one needle. So my stitching sister, you know, at like 11.30 p.m. in the evening, who else are you gonna call? Marie, what am I gonna do, right? <laughs> How, you have any thoughts? And she said, you know what? wind the thread twice around that disc on top of the machine, on the multi-needle machine. Now you can't do this on a single needle machine, but on that 10 needle, and that was beautiful. It was, I, it never had another thread break. So, and that's like my needle number three on that one machine at home. I don't have to do it on the other nine, just that one. So you never really know, you know, it's just like if you had 10 children, right? They're all a little different for sure. So are your needles. So, and when I'm talking about needles, you know, on a 10 needle, that's really, you know, colors one through 10. It's not the specific needle that goes into the machine itself, right? What is the weight of the thread? Judy Cushing, you know, I don't know, but I think it's 40 weight. Um, that's a good question. And maybe somebody in my team will respond. But it's a it's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful weight thread. It's a little bit lighter, most certainly than a traditional forty weight polyester thread. Uh, but you don't need a heavy metallic thread for uh, most of the embroidery that you know wearable embroidery for sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, Joanne Banco. Oh, that's scary. She had a metallic thread on on a blouse, and it set off the um, alarm at the airport security. I have heard that before. I ha And I know it, crystals will do that too. So unless you're willing to take that garment off at security, maybe not wear it, right? And uh, Reen Wilcoxon, you like to mix the metallic thread with regular thread. I do too. Absolutely. You know, I don't always do all metallic for sure. And in fact, in that bat, there is some black um, thread that stitches over segments of the copper that really kind of tones it down. You know, I didn't digitize that, so I just followed their um, recommendation. And uh, let's see, Pearl wants to know what type of needle to use. This is the beauty of Kingstar. You don't need a special needle. Kingstar thread, all you need is to match the needle to the fabric that you're stitching on. So, you know, you should be using your embroiderer's compass. I hope you have one of these. This is uh, Deborah Jones's creation. And when you select your fabric, like let's see right here, we have satin polyester. And in the satin and polyester, she says, she recommends a light ballpoint, like a extra slim 7511. So if the, I was stitching Kingstar on that, that's the needle I would use. You don't need a special eye for this metallic thread. And most machine automatic threaders will catch it. All of my 10 needles, I, there's two 10 needles that we use here all the time, and they both, all 20 needles, you, 
will accept the needle automatic needle threader. I have one machine at home that won't allow me to do that. That's a single needle flatbed, but uh, only on the metallic. That, that's okay, right? I can do that myself. And let's see, no-show mesh is a great way to smooth the back of metallic embroidery. Well, Kristen, it is, but we have another product that we love for that, which is our uh, Fuse So Soft. It's a Trico knit interfacing, and that, that's got a softer hand, and uh, it's more comfortable next to the skin, actually, than the no-show mesh. So a lot of people do find the back of metallic thread possibly could be itchy. And um, so, you know, you may want to fuse a product over the back of the embroidery. And then Sharon, you want to know what's the name of that guy? This is the Embroiderer's Compass. Let me spin that. And it's a two-sided product, right? So this wheel here that you're looking at, see how it spins? And the arrow up here points to the fabric that's on the outside rim. And then in the windows, it tells you the stabilizer you should use and the needle, but it's two-sided. So we have another whole set of fabrics on the back. And then Deborah even includes a comment, like this is for Lycra and spandex, ah, right? That's a scary fabric to stitch sometimes. So she's gonna tell you what stabilizer to use, what needle, and then she also says, Make sure the backing is secured in the hoop on all edges because uh, if an item will be stretched when worn, you should also stretch a little, stretch the fabric a little bit when you are hooping to build in some ease. And that's a great tip on, you know, tight garments. Like this blouse, this t-shirt that I'm wearing is rather loose fitting, but if I wanted this to be super tight, then um, I would stretch that fabric just a little bit while, while I hoop. And Nancy Eagleton, she just dove in and bought the Kingstar holiday pack. Thank you. Oh, I think you're going to find it's worth the price. Absolutely. It is absolutely. We love it. And um, my team has said that the Kingstar metallic is 40 weight. It is, um, but you know, it's just beautiful. I love it. I love it. So last week we talked about monster hoops and we had a lot of questions about, um, of, of how to apply the rulers and so forth. So in a moment, I'm gonna go back over there and um, share that step out with you. And Sharon, it is a lot of information. This, you know, I have this in in my sewing room. I, I, I refer to it all the time. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? She is an absolute wizard and she wrote it all down for all of us. She has shared her knowledge and you know now you can have it's like having her in your room and so when i can't call my stitch and sister you know at 11 o'clock at night right that's what you um that's what you uh can use that's your reference okay so let's go over and take a look at the monster hoop i want to show you how you would add those second set of adhesive rulers so let me kind of clean up here a little bit and uh bring this over into place. Okay, so you can see that I have stitched my crosshair. Now remember, this crosshair is a downloadable design. It's on my blog. Our team is going to put that um, link up there for you. And it's, you can, we have it, it's a zip file and it has it in all different sizes, but it doesn't really matter what size you do it in. Um, you just want to have that crosshair. And then, uh, now I've already have my adhesive rulers on top. So if I purchase a second set of rulers and I wanna add them to my bottom frame, this is how you do it. You hoop your stabilizer, stitch that crosshair in thread that you can see, black is perfect. And then you absolutely have to make sure that your magnetic top is aligned with your bottom. So just feel with your fingers all the way around. Then take a Sharpie and draw on the inside of that frame. Just draw, just like that. And now we are free to separate this. And of course, everybody loves to see me do this on camera because <laughs> it's not that easy and we're supposed to slide it apart. You know, they don't slide when people are watching. Did you ever know that? <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to take that same stabilizer and I'm going to place my metal frame right over it aligning 
everything. I want to make sure that I have that inner frame that I drew is just perfect on my metal frame. And then I just take my rulers. Now I could go and take a um, small ruler and connect it to extend my crosshairs. So I'll do that right now. I'll just extend them all the way out. Now, I normally use POW, our perfect alignment laser, to do this, but I don't have one hooked up here right now because due to lighting. So then I just position, and I like to put my, uh, my lines to the inside of the hoop and my numbers outside. And I just line up that zero with that marked crosshair. Same thing here. And then, you know, of course, I would take the time to remove that adhesive that's on the back of these rulers and then just finger press that in place. And then that's going to be absolutely perfectly aligned. And uh, now I'll have rulers on the bottom and also on the top. And that can be very helpful for, you know, trying to center something in the hoop. So super fun. Right? Okay, when will the hoops be available? Let's see, Susie wants to know when will the hoops be, every time you try to purchase, they are sold out. We actually have a lot of hoops that are in inventory. We don't have that many on back order. Susie, it could be the way you are um, trying to order. You know, on the website, you have to um, select your brand of hoops, uh, of machine, and then from there, you look to the next drop down window and pick a size. And if it says not available, that means it's not compatible with your machine model. So just kind of play with those windows and um, you, you'll, you'll be able to, to find your size. We don't really have that many on back order. And Debbie wants to know, can you use the monster hoop for your Janome 550? Yes, we do make a monster hoop for the Janome 550E. It's a five by seven and an eight by eight at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the twice around works for you with, oh, Nancy Ingleton, you also do the twice around on the, uh, on the tension on your multi-needle. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, when my sister told me that, I was like, mm, really? But, you know, work like a dream. But I don't need to do it on all 10 needles. Apparently, it's just, you know, that one needle. So I kind of have a little marker on that one. And if that tells me, um, so let's see, Susie Mountjoy, you called our company and you have a Lumi. I guess that's a Luminaire. I don't think we're out of too many Luminaire hoops, but, um, and Gail, you love your monster hoops. I know, me too. You know, recently I was talking to one of our sewing machine retailers and I told him, you know, if I hadn't invented the magnetic hoop, I don't think I'd be embroidering anymore. It's just so complicated with that inner and outer ring and they fall apart and oh boy. Um, and Retha, do we have the largest 10 by 16? I'm not sure about that. The largest 10 by 6, we make it for the 10 by 16 for sure. Um, but I'm not quite sure if it's in stock. I think it is though, but, um, I guess I should ask, get a back order, um, update before we go on live, right? <clears throat> so, uh, next week, well, let's see, we have some other comments. I want to, uh, snap hoop. So no hoop for the Janome 7.9 by 14 for your Janome 550. No, we don't make that quite yet. We are, uh, considering that. Uh, we kind of work with Janome on the, and when they have a demand for it, then we often, um, will come out with that hoop. So let's see, and Diane, you find it difficult to, to keep your stabilizer flat when using the magnetic, magnetic hoops. When I lower the top, it shifts the fabric. Well, um, let me give you a little lesson on how to hoop. So here, we'll pop over there and I'll show you what I do. So I'm just gonna move all this and <clears throat> I'll take my, well, I'll leave the stabilizer so you can see what happens. And then here's a quilt sandwich. And so what I do is I place my magnetic frame perpendicular to the metal frame and I have it, I'm feeling that it's aligned. Here's my metal frame here. So I know that that's fairly close. And then I smooth my fabric and very carefully hold it in place and then just drop it. And because I have pressure out here, 
I don't have any problem. Then I can just smooth and pull this fabric. You know, that's the beauty of these hoops that you can smooth and tug the fabric, make minute uh, adjustments to your fabric right in the hoop. So that's how I do that. And, um, you know, it does take some practice. Now, if you are just hooping stabilizer, yeah, that does want to jump around. I can tell you, and I'm not on my hoop mat. That does help for sure. So I could get a hoop mat and show you that, how that does really help everything stay still. So I've just placed my outer ring, <clears throat> my metal flat ring down on that sticky surface. And boy, that doesn't move. It's awesome. And then this can be a little tricky. So again, I, now I would probably keep this a little lower the the top of the frame lower to the stabilizer and I hold the stabilizer with my fingers out here away from the bottom frame and then just drop it and I don't have any bubbles so that works out great okay uh, do you only have two sizes for the Bernina we make um four different hoops for the Bernina I believe uh, so let's see and yeah, my team is saying that the 10 by 16 is in stock and available. So you can go find that. Uh, let's see, Diane, the same thing happens. Yeah, Julina, so, you know, it's just with practice, you will find, um, you will find that it's easier every time you embroider. And just like your outer ring jumping all around in a standard hoop, you know, you got used to that, I'm sure, and you've been able to master that. Same thing with the magnetic hoops. You know, the beauty to me about the magnetic hoop is I don't have to worry about hooping perfectly square because I can make those minute fabric adjustments right, you know, after I hoop or even under the needle. So that's why I like it. So, and Barbara Jett, yes, you did. We've already discussed the metallic thread, but watch the replay because, you know, it wasn't that long of a segment and you can get all that information there for sure. And Susan, you want to know uh, where do you find the sticky adhesive tape um, rulers? You know, they're not on our website. You'll have to call customer service, which is 888-739-0555. We consider them a part, you know, like a, a replacement part. So that's why they're not on our website. <clears throat> and Debbie Howe, you have, um, you love your hoops because you've quilted several quilts with it. I know, me too. Is that the best feeling, a sense of accomplishment when you quilt a quilt on your embroidery machine? I mean, this just makes you feel like a rock star, right? Who knew that we would be able to do such a big task with our embroidery machine? I mean, I love that. That, I just love that. You know, because you spend all that time creating the top you know, your heart and you just pour your heart and soul into those quilt tops. And then to hand it off to someone else to quilt kind of leaves many people, you know, you wish you could have finished the whole thing. And now with these monster hoops, and if you have the big hoop, you know, the, the machine that allows you uh, to have a large sewing field, well, it's just awesome. And uh, Miss Lombard did a twin quilt with these hoops and the edge to edge. Uh, you're right. Is it's just beautiful. Yeah, I've done a king and I've done a queen. I've done two queens for, well, two or three or four, but most of the quilts I do are lap quilts and they're like 54 inches by 72, which is too big for, you know, just uh, a standard hoop for sure. And it's kind of hard to do, um, to maintain all that weight. And, you know, in two weeks, we're going to be talking all about quilting here and we're going to reset the room and we're actually going to get that out and um, and the weightless quilter and so forth. So you'll see how I handle the weight of a, a large quilt right here in the studio. You can see that. And Barbara Jett, how do you get the replay? Just when this is done, you can go back to Facebook and, and then you can watch the replay. You can fast forward to the part that you want to see. Um, yeah. And Retha, you need that big hoop for your Solaris. Oh yeah. That big hoop is awesome. Uh, just awesome. That's, you know, if you're going to do a lot of quilting now, remember every, you know, you have to fill that hoop with fabric. So if you don't do large projects, then treat yourself to a hoop that would more uh, fit your needs. Like many people, their favorite is that nine and a half by 14. And if you're on a smaller hoop, a smaller machine with a smaller sewing field, Purchase the hoop that is 
the same size as the hoop you normally use. So if you're always going to a five by seven, then buy a five by seven. If you're always going to the eight by 12, buy the eight by 12. That, that's kind of my rule of thumb. Now, if you're lucky, you can buy them all because if you have all the different sizes, you'll find that you're going to use a monster hoop over your standard hoop every time. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I think that's about it for today. If you have any more questions about um, the weightless quilter, I'd be happy to respond. Next week, we in, well, oh, I, I said two weeks we'd be here for weightless quilting. It's actually three because next week we do medley thread. So um, let me share a little image of that. And we're going to talk about how you would use that in quilting, in satin stitches, selecting the right fabrics, because, you know, um, sometimes you can lose part of the medley thread on the fabric due to the contrast in um, the colors that come on the spool. So, oh, here, Aretha, she says her son is here and he just embroidered a jean jacket with the plastic hoop and it was scary. Yeah. Ugh. Well, he would have loved it if he had a monster hoop. Men love monster hoops, right? They just think that's so cool. Anyway, and so do I. So thank you all for joining me today. Remember, like us on Facebook, subscribe to YouTube. We're so happy to have you um, join us every week, Thursdays at one o'clock. And if you do those two tasks, you'll be notified automatically when we go live. So thanks for watching today.